Hello and welcome fellow bookworms. Welcome to this week's episode of The Contented Narrative. We are looking at The Postman Always Rings Twice by James M. Kane. Now this is a Folio Society and I know I've done a Folio Society quite recently. As I said, I've been reading a few of them. I mean, it's... It's a very, it's a very beautiful edition as usual. Now I got this for myself because they were having a sale. Um, and sometimes with the Folio Society sales, I'm looking at the books going, oh, I'm not, not a huge, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably not gonna get them. But this one, The Postman Always Rings Twice, has been on my radar for quite some time and I've really been thinking about it and going, should I, shouldn't I, let's have a look, you know. And then when it dropped down to like 25 quid, I was like, 100% I'm getting that. And so essentially it follows it follows our main guy oh, you know how i am with names i really should remember names a bit better um my goodness it just says i oh yeah frank chambers there we go so it follows frank and he moves in with nick and his wife and he just helps out with you know general odd bods he's kind of like a hitchhiker around america kind of thing but then he really falls for the wife so he then starts having an affair with the wife, but he's a fantastic friend and, and great worker to Nick. And then they try and kill off the husband. Uh, doesn't quite go to plan. So then things happen uh, and it continues. And it was a really good book. It was it was one of those where it's like, it's not a whodunit because we know whodunit. And I, you know, when you sit there and you're like, I don't know if I want you to succeed or not, to be perfectly honest, because this Nick seems like a really, really good guy. Who are you to try and kill him off because you want to have like his wife 24 7 but it was just it was a really fun read and it was one of those where it was just kind of like i can imagine you know watching it as a film and just kind of you know when you get the campy scenes where it's like the husband's walking in and the you've, you've got the the um it's not a mistress is it was it it's not a master either you've got the piece on the side climbing out of the window trousers around their ankles kind of thing and it's I can I could imagine that very well and it's one of those where it's just like as I was reading it I was like this is actually quite fun like I'm I'm quite enjoying this and it just feels like when you finish the book you're like okay that was it's like a palate cleanser almost you don't have to think too hard when you're reading it it doesn't require a lot of imagination um and that may seem like a bad thing but sometimes when you're reading the big dramas when you're reading the you know like i love the harry potter series i do it it's such a great series i'm such a potter nerd it's unreal but it does take a lot of imagination um when especially when i was reading them growing up before the films had come out of imagining all these magical you know castles and and the great lake and the kraken and the hippogriffs and and getting that world building in your head and this and even with whodunits, you've got to imagine, you've got to think, right, okay, so so-and-so was here and doing this, but then so-and-so was here and doing that, and you've got to remember where the characters are, and don't even get me started on trying to read George R.R. R. Martin, um, or Tolkien, either of those, you've got to really be focusing, and you've got to really remember what you're reading. And so sometimes you need a book that's like a palate cleanser, where it's like you're just turning off your brain. It's like with TV series, you can, you can put it on as background noise almost, you don't really have to pay attention, you could literally fall asleep, wake up, and you still understand what's going on. And this is what this book feels like to me, and this is why I really, really enjoyed it. Because when you've read a couple of big books, and you've read books that have taken a lot of concentration, reading this where you can just even if you end up like skimming over the words I don't I, I really don't I'm a fast reader but I don't skim you're still getting the plot you're still getting the characters and although the characters do feel a little bit like two-dimensional they don't feel as well-rounded it feels more like um you know a continuation of the plot it's like oh I need a adulterous wife oh I need someone that's going to come in and, and seduce the wife do you know what I mean it kind of feels like that but it is still just a nice kind of read it, done with it, absolutely fine. And it, it is it is quite enjoyable. I wouldn't say it sticks with you for years. I wouldn't say it's one that you'd be thinking about months afterwards. But I would say that it's, it's you know, give it a go. It is a very good book. But it does get a four out of five. And it is just because the characters do not feel as well rounded as I have had in like previous books and things like that. And although it's a palate cleanser, sometimes I do feel like 
just just give her a bit more than just the adulterous wife do you know what i mean um but obviously if you've read any other of, of J, J, james m kane's book work um and you know you feel like i'm being unfair with with my with my review please honestly let me know i'm, I'm happy to take the criticism uh, and the feedback but thank you so much for your continued support remember to click subscribe so you're alerted whenever new videos come out remember to just interact with the channel as well i'm always happy for comments and and discussions happening this is kind of what i'm doing this for um and remember to always keep it contento